confiscation law, violates Second and Fourteenth Amendments. In a disturbing move that reeks of tyranny, Oregon Governor Kate Brown signed a Democrat bill into law that permits the Oregon government to steal guns without notice. The law, based off of Oregon Senate Bill 719, has faced massive resistance from Republicans and Oregon citizens alike. Despite this, the local governments managed to sign it into law Oregon is no longer a free state. Advertisement This new Andy Second Amendment law allows all officials in the state of Oregon to order the removal of guns from the possession of free individuals. There is no evidence that is needed to perform the confiscation. The gun owner isn't he given a hearing until after. Worse yet, the only way for the gun owner to get his gun back is to file a case and prove his innocence. Yes, this is guilty until proven innocent. It is unconstitutional in more than one way. If we keep ceding our rights, we won't have any left. It's also a direct violation of the 14th Amendment. This amendment gives everyone the right to a formal hearing before his or the tyrannical government steals her property. Advertisement All persons born or naturalized in the United States, and subject to the jurisdiction thereof, are citizens of the United States and of the state wherein they reside. No state shall make or enforce any law, which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property, without due process of law, nor deny to any person within its jurisdiction the equal protection of the laws. The Fourteenth Amendment of the United States Constitution conflicts with the new Oregon law. The law refuses to give citizens due process and then steals their Second Amendment rights. This must be struck down immediately. Despite this massive overreach of the state government, zero mainstream media outlets have reported on it. Not CNN, not MSNBC, and not even Fox News has covered this story in depth at as high time that this go viral, so that the people of America know what's happening right under our noses. What do you think of this story? Valerie Plame Wilson launches doomed effort to kick Trump off Twitter. Valerie Plame Wilson is on a mission. She wants to ban President Trump from Twitter. How would she go about this? She wants to buy it. Valerie Plame Wilson is a well known CIA operative because there was a leak during the most recent Bush administration. She went out of her way to start a GoFundMe page to purchase the controlling interest in Twitter. She wants to do this to delete the president's account. Advertisement Twitter is worth $12 billion and the shares are going for $16. She do not like his mean words. It hurts her little feelings. She basically is just another whiner who is truing to suppress words to save the feelings of the left and to prohibit Trump from accomplishing his goal. Advertisement Donald Trump has done a lot of horrible things on Twitter. From emboldening white supremacists to promoting violence against journalists, his tweets damaged the country and put people in harm s way comma Wilson wrote on the campaign's page but threatening actual nuclear war with North Korea takes it to a dangerous new level. Her monetary goal is $1 billion. It's quite a stretch considering it's been a week since she started the campaign and she has raised a measly $3,000. At the current market rate that would require over a billion dollars but that has a small price to pay to take away Trump's most powerful megaphone and prevent a horrific nuclear war comma Plame wrote. Twitter has already once stood up for Trump's ability to use Twitter. The Liberal Losers CEO Jack Dorsey said that it is important for Americans to hear directly from the president. One analyst has figured out that getting rid of the president's tweets would eliminate $2 billion of revenue for Twitter. That is insane. The president is well known for cutting loose on Twitter and giving the people his words directly. Wilson believes that he is weaponizing Twitter. Yes, he is weaponizing Twitter by sharing his opinions. Wilson is a nut job just like the rest of the left. Tweets like this are heard around the world, comma Wilson said. As he uses his biggest platform to escalate the crisis, 
this could all too easily spark a military confrontation that goes nuclear. What do you think about Wilson's plan? Scott Bio drops nuke bomb on Hollywood libs threatening his career for backing Trump. Scott Bio is on fire in the political realm. He doesn't care what any liberals think and he is even trying to be self-deprecating when it comes to his career in Hollywood. I don't give a s, d if I ever work again, Bio, who spoke at the 2016 Republican National Convention, sniped to the Hollywood Reporter in an interview released Wednesday. My country comes first. I guess I'm just an old, angry, successful white guy who stole everything he has from someone else. Advertisement Scott doesn't give a crap about the other Hollywood losers. They are the people who have been pushing the liberal agenda against President Trump for the Democratic Party for the last two years. They hate his policies and they hate white nationalists, but when it comes to enacting their liberal open borders policies, they move away from the mass waves of immigrants and they keep their doors locked. I don't give a s, t about Hollywood liberals. They're gonna hate the guy no matter what, the Charles in charge star fumed. If he cured cancer, they'd be on him for putting oncologists out of business. Advertisement Scott Bio also said that his support for the president has only gotten stronger since the POTUS called out the violence that came from many sides regarding the protests in Charlottesville, Virginia. In that protests one woman died and it was allegedly a terrorist attack, but the police haven't finished investigating. All this does is help Trump because people have had it. Conservatives in Hollywood have had it, Bio whose most recent IMDb credit is from 2014, asserted. We know who Trump is, and we don't believe the propaganda, and I don't think most of the country does, either. The media is almost irrelevant. It's predictable and boring. I want the man to get his agenda through, and everything else is a sideshow. What do you think about this? Debbie Schultz gives worst excuse in history of criminal excuses for why she kept paying Imran. Debbie Wasserman Schultz is getting more backlash as a result of the IT scammer known as Imran Awan. The more you see the more bold you realize Awan and Schultz truly are. Imran Awan worked for Debbie Wasserman Schultz for 13 years since she came into office in 2004 as a Florida representative. She only fired him this past week and would have kept paying her IT expert even when he was living in Pakistan. Advertisement The three Pakistani brothers who handled the IT affairs for several Democratic government officials were removed from their posts in February because they allegedly accessed specific computer networks they weren't allowed. This is what the federal government considers hacking. Imran Awan who started working for Wasserman Schultz in 2005, received $164,600 in 2016, with close to $20,000 of that coming from Wasserman Schultz. His brother Jamal, who started working as a staffer in 2014, was paid $157,350.12 in 2016. Abed who started working in 2005, was paid $160,943 in 2016. Advertisement Imran's wife, Hina Alvi, was also employed, as a staffer by the Democrats since 2007 was paid $168,300 last year. Abed, Imran and Jamal Awan were barred from computer networks at the House of Representatives in February. Most of the House members fired the Awan subsequently. Only Debbie Wasserman Schultz kept Imran Awan on the payroll up to the day he got arrest for bank fraud after trying to flee the country. Awan's family left the country and took hundreds of thousands of tax dollars with them. They were able to wire to Pakistan while under investigation somehow. According to Reddit, Imran Awan is now released with a GPS ankle monitor until his preliminary hearing on August 21. The information keeps coming and it is damning. 
Awen posed as his wife while requesting a loan from the Congressional Federal Credit Union and was approved. He was able to wire $165,000 to Pakistan with no issue. What do you think about this? Chuck Schumer just responded to Trump's threat to shut down government overwall. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer is going after the president yet again. He is whining because President Trump is saying that he will make sure that the shutdown will occur if the funding for the border wall isn't approved. If the president pursues this path, against the wishes of both Republicans and Democrats, as well as the majority of the American people, he will be heading towards a government shutdown which nobody will like and which won't accomplish anything, Schumer said in a statement on Wednesday. Advertisement Trump made it seem during his Tuesday night rally in Phoenix that he has no problem with the government shutting down to force Congress to pass the proper funding and budget of the wall. This is one of Trump's biggest campaign promises and he isn't willing to take a loss. Build that wall. Now, the obstructionist Democrats would like us not to do it, but believe me, if we have to close down our government, we're building that wall, Trump said. The money and the physical is a no-go for Democrats who rely on illegal votes to maintain some semblance of power. Their votes are needed though because there are numerous traitors in the Republican Party. The GOP isn't cooperating like they should either. Advertisement Some Republicans, particularly from states along the southern border, have also voiced skepticism that a standalone wall is the right approach. The fight over Trump's border wall is expected to come to a head in September, when lawmakers face an end-of-the-month deadline to fund the government and avoid a shutdown. If Congress and the White House don't get a deal or pass a temporary spending bill, the government will shut down on October 1. The House added money for the wall in a national security-related funding bill they were able to pass before the recent recess. Of course the losers in the Senate like Chuck Schumer will not approve such a common-sense bill. The Trump administration initially pushed for money for the border wall in a short-term funding bill passed in May, but backed down from the threat. Instead, the legislation included money for border security and a boost in defense spending. What do you think of Chuck Schumer fighting so hard to let Americans die?